All right. Uh, so I just, this is an impromptu idea. Uh, this is a tool that I work with uh, as part of my day job. And I realized as I was coming to this conference that I've never actually talked to Wikipedians about this. And that seemed like a cry and shame. So here I am to tell you about this. This leans academic, but it occurred to me there are actually some really interesting uses for Wikipedia potentially. So it's called Media Cloud. The lore behind it was there was a conversation between a couple people at the Berkman Center at Harvard 15 years ago now, debating who control, who sets the agenda for the news. One person said that it was uh, bloggers and people who use it, you know, back when blogging was a big deal. Uh, and one person said that it was the traditional legacy news media. And in order to settle that argument, they created a massive news database and a system to query that database. So Media Cloud is three things. One is a, a, a database of about a half a billion news stories from all over the world. Second thing is a directory where you collect different sources together into collections. So for example, a list of national US sources or Spanish language um, sources from Mexico or things that are based on partisanship, based on research. So uh, domains that are tweeted more often by people who identify as Republican on Twitter versus people who identify as Democrat on Twitter. So it's been used academically for a long time. Um, and uh, the last part of it is a system for querying that database that anyone can use. So some of the things that occurred to me that might be useful for Wikipedians is one is just source discovery. So the ambition for Media Cloud is it's not a perfect collection, but it is a, a pretty close to, it's a really good um, database of news stories. So if you're trying to capture the extent to which a subject has been covered within a given time frame, within a group of sources, uh, within a particular country, uh, you can do all of that based on nearly all of the sources that have been uh, uh, published in that time in news sources. Um, so just to, as a real quick demo, like let's say that we want to look up Kamala Harris and I don't know, immigration. See what we cover with this. We want to cover both terms uh, the default settings is a bunch of national sources, and we click search, and we see the attention over time. So you can investigate different spikes in attention. You can look at the total story count, and you can download all of the URLs for all of the stories that mention both of those terms. And the querying system gets pretty advanced. So you can like look for words that are in a certain number of words uh, distance from each other. You can exclude certain words. You can look for phrases. There are wild cards. So in this way, it's almost like an alternative to some of the other source discovery tools you have. Um, but because it's so comprehensive, it can also potentially be used in debates over like, what's the common name for this thing? Is the common name for this subject shifting from the past to the present? You can see a graph that is uh, specific to news and typically more current than whatever the last Google Engrams uh, uh, report is um, to settle those sorts of things. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's, so there's just, there's a lot you can do. One thing that I, I could do is if people want to be interested is to actually create a collection that is just the sources that are considered reliable on the perennial sources list. And so then you can just look through that particular collection at, for whatever your topic is and automatically you're filtering out a lot of the noise that you would come up with on a Google search. So it's a pretty powerful tool. Um, there are lots of different collections. How, how am I doing for time? Do I have another minute? About a minute, yeah. Okay. Um, so you just, just a matter of collect, let's say I want to look at, uh, sources that are tweeted mostly by democratic voters here, we'll remove the national one. I'll add a query. That's exactly the same. And in this one, I will select one of the uh, Republican voters. So now we're looking at differences in how groups of sources cover this subject. And as I search, should come back fairly quickly because we're only searching a month of data when in fact you can search for years at a time if you want to. 
relatively should quickly. relatively quickly. Yes, uh, it will pull things up. You'll you'll be able to see the difference in attention. But also there are some bonus features at the bottom, like top words. What are the words that appear in each collection differently? So I, I use partisanship, but I could also use countries. So how does Mexican news cover a Mexican subject differently from the ways that um, uh, Spanish language American sources cover a subject as a way to surface areas of systemic bias? So there's a lot you can do. Happy to talk more with anybody about this afterwards. It just seemed like a shame to, that Wikipedians weren't using it. Um, and uh, yeah, there we go. Is, is it free to sign up? Yep. Sorry. Yeah. What did you say, Richard? Have you cited it in Amazon? Um, it's screen up Um, screen up Tom. Yeah. I have not cited it. No. Um, I did. Uh, write something that I had linked from a page, like a report that I made using this to see if anybody else, I put it on a talk page, see if anybody else wanted to use it. They did not, um, but that's fine. Because it's really not. Like we do obviously research based on this, which can be cited, but it's also just a useful tool for the to use in the research tools. Thanks. Yeah.